Welcome to the video series, The Operational Amplifier, From Abstraction to Reality. This video is about a design practice to mitigate the error effects of input bias current that has been around since the dawn of the monolithic op amp. This practice is very much outdated and needs to be retired. National Semiconductor, back in the 1970s, had great op amp product offerings. They also published some linear applications handbooks that had some golden op-amp circuits. This is my copy that I used in the 70s. Here is an excerpt from that 1973 linear applications handbook that shows the application of an inverting amplifier. It has the closed-loop gain equation like we derived in the earlier op-amp abstraction video. But read this along with me. The only cautions to be observed are that R3 should be chosen to be equal to the parallel combination of R1 and R2 to minimize the offset voltage error due to bias current and that there will be an offset at the amplifier output equal to the closed loop gain times the offset voltage at the amplifier input. Well, this makes a bold assumption that the input bias current for the non-inverting input equals that of the inverting input. The addition of a calculated R3 creates a voltage drop due to the input bias current through the non-inverting input that is assumed to be equal to the inverting input. This nullifies the effect of the input bias current. That exact same information is repeated again in this 1994 linear applications handbook. Same schematic image with the big dots, but similar typography. One difference is the use of an LM107 instead of an LM101. In case you didn't know, Texas Instruments bought National Semiconductor in 2011 for $6.5 billion in cash. Let's quickly review the basics of input bias current and input offset current from the abstraction video. With the ideal op-amp abstraction, the input current into both inputs is zero. With the real op-amp, the input bias current in the data books is the average of the two inputs. We know the two input currents are not equal, and the input offset current parameter is defined as the difference between the two input currents. Here's the ways the offset canceling resistors are used for the various configurations. The inverting amplifier gets the resistor inserted between the non-inverting input and ground, as was shown in the previous databook example. The non-inverting configuration gets the resistor inserted between the input and the non-inverting input. The voltage follower gets both a resistor on the input and in the feedback path. Before we get into the math, that shows why the compensating resistor value is the parallel combination of the grounded resistor and the feedback resistor, I intentionally left out one particular op-amp application from the abstraction video to discuss it now. It's the current to voltage converter. Here's the schematic. These amplifiers are often called trans-resistance amplifiers because they are inherently current to voltage converters just like a resistor. It's like an inverting amplifier where the input resistor is replaced with a short. If a current is forced into I1, the output voltage will be proportional to that current. Because the V- terminal is a virtual ground, the input resistance is zero. I1 plus IF equals zero, so I1 equals minus IF. Since it's going through the inverting input, VO equals IF times RF. Therefore, the trans-resistance gain is given by the voltage out over input current, which equals minus RF. Here's a current-to-voltage converter with a current source connected to its input. Because RS connects from a virtual ground to real ground, the current through RS is zero. It follows that I1 equals IS and VO equals minus RF 
times IS. Thus, the output voltage is independent of RS. The takeaway from this exercise is that the current in RS is zero because one end is virtual ground and the other is at real ground. This will apply to our input bias cancellation example. Moving forward, we will do the analysis to calculate the value of the cancellation bias resistor. Here's a schematic of an op amp with input bias current source models for both the inverting and non-inverting inputs. This can be viewed as an inverting amplifier or a non-inverting amplifier. For sake of the analysis, both inputs are grounded. From the current to voltage converter example, we know the contribution to V out due to the inverting input bias current, negative IB minus times RF. RI causes the positive input to be offset negative by I bias plus plus RI. This is amplified by the non-inverting gain. You can, therefore, adjust RI to nullify the effect on the bias current into the negative input. It uses the assumption that the positive and negative input bias currents are the same, and VI equals zero. You can easily calculate V out by noting that we have a voltage adder circuit. The output is the sum of these two contributions. I'm substituting the gain programming resistors in place of AV, which you should recall from the abstraction video. After setting both contributing errors equal to one another, we can cancel the two input bias currents using the assumption that they are equal. Rearranged, this looks like the familiar parallel resistor formula. In this example, with both inputs grounded, the voltage across RR is zero volts. Let's apply some abstract, fictitious, but easy to work with resistor values. Let RF be 14 ohms and RR be 1 ohm. And let the bias currents be 1 ampere each. This makes the inverting gain be 14 and the non-inverting gain be 15. The negative input bias current of 1 amp would cause an output error of 14 volts. So what kind of change would be needed on the non-inverting input to cancel out the 14 volts? Since the non-inverting gain is 15, it would be 14 volts divided by 15, which equals 0.933 volts. 0.933 volts times 1 amp equals 0.933 ohms. The same as 14 ohms in parallel with 1 ohm. Let's talk about how this got started. Here's a simplified schematic of an early op amp front end. To get reasonable speeds, the emitter tail was in the range of 20 microamps. This meant each transistor in the differential pair was about 10 microamps. With a beta of 50, this meant the input bias current was about 200 nanoamps. Since the input offset current was about 10 to 20% of the bias current, Canceling the input current with a resistor made a significant difference in the output voltage error. The remaining output voltage error after cancellation is the input offset current times RF plus the input offset voltage times the closed loop gain. There has been significant progress in operational amplifier development. The input bias current of the OPA277 series is a typical one half nanoamp. But look at the input offset current. It's the same as the input bias current. It doesn't do any good to do cancellation if the input offset current is not a small fraction of the input bias current. DC precision is required. Just use the right op amp. Another reason to not use the canceling resistor is noise. That input resistor generates significant noise. Here's the one-sided DC power spectral density of resistor noise per hertz of bandwidth, where K is Boltzmann's constant, T is the temperature, R is the resistance. Here's the equation for the noise voltage. As an example, 
Let's calculate the noise in a 1K resistor. It comes out close to 4 nanovolts per square root hertz. Here's a non-inverting amplifier example where RI is the input bias canceling resistor, which is set to the parallel combination of RF and RR. Since RF is in the feedback path, it has a direct effect on the output voltage, so we can assign it to an equivalent gain of 1. The change in the voltage across RR, however, is amplified by the inverting gain of the amplifier, which is 14. But the change in the voltage across RI is amplified by the non-inverting gain of the amplifier, which is 15. Therefore, RI is the biggest contributor to the output noise and it's the smallest resistor value. The good news is most of the time when you have a low noise requirement, you don't need DC precision. Stability issues can arise when using canceling resistors with a voltage follower. The parasitic op amp input capacitance, along with the PWB capacitance, can introduce phase shift in the feedback loop and erodes the phase margin. Using the input bias canceling resistors is an outdated practice. If DC precision is required, use a CMOS op amp that has super low input bias current. JFED input op amps also have very low input bias current. There are several bipolar op amps that have internal bias canceling using laser trim techniques. Also bear in mind, the input offset voltage is a major contributor that isn't addressed by this bias current canceling resistor. Just pick the right op amp for your DC precision needs and forget this whole practice. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.